Hello and welcome to Camp Bastion as we look back on another week in Afghanistan. I'm Carla Prater and coming up in today's programme. Armed with AK-47s, GPMGs and RPGs and wearing US Army uniform, they had come prepared. Behind me is Highway 601, one of the main routes in and out of Lashkar, and it's used by tens of thousands of vehicles every week. Control of security here in Lashkar was handed over to Afghan security forces last summer. What do we know about this tour then? Captain Wales arrived last night for his second operational tour of Afghanistan, as well as seeing areas affected by last year's earthquake. Prince Harry has made it very clear he wants to use this trip to pay tribute to the Gurkhas. Sadly, this is still the reality for many. This is an emergency camp that was set up at Bhaktapur, just outside of Kathmandu a year ago. While the weekend starts for many personnel here at RAF Marham, the cordons remain in place. The MOD have now officially confirmed that members of the 2nd Battalion, the Yorkshire Regiment are in Iraq. Personnel from the Royal Air Force and the Army have deployed to help warn residents who are in areas that are vulnerable to flooding. There are more than 40 paratroopers taking part today, a mix of British and Indian personnel. And in a moment, we'll be taking off in this Herc, heading over to the Stanta training area in Norfolk. Jungle is one of the toughest environments to train in, so to start this exercise, everyone's going through survival school. Each platoon has to spend 48 hours out in the jungle without any support, forced to find their own food and water, make their own shelter and fire. This is the centre of Ayanapa, an area packed with bars and clubs that's out of bounds to military personnel. And it was here inside the black and white nightclub that the fatal fight took place. In many parts of Nepal, the signs of devastation from last year's earthquakes are still clearly visible. Piles of rubble litter the landscape like scars. A reminder that this country still has a long way to go before it's rebuilt. Before the sun is even up, potential recruits arrive at the gates of Camp in Pokhara. The next few days could change their lives forever. Despite the odds and the range of educational and physical tests ahead of them, today's candidates are arriving better prepared than ever before. These are some of the final 400 applicants and competition at this stage is fierce. This is part of Nicosia few people will ever get to see. Part of the city centre where time stands still. It's an area of calm, but in 1974, the fighting here was intense. The sky is basically full of planes and parachutes at 6.30 a.m. In the distance, George can see his old house in the village of Akna, the other side of the buffer zone. They slept here under the trees until humanitarian aid arrived. It became a tented city, a city of refugees with nowhere else to go. 